what's up guys? So today we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how we can take something like this, where we have this H1 tag in the middle of the screen with a number of media queries set on it for making it kind of larger and smaller, depending on the size of the screen, and transform this into something that is a single line of code, which defines the lower and upper bounds of that size, that font size or padding or margin or whatever you wanna use this on, and gives you a fluid transition between the larger bound down to the lower bound like this. As you can see, this is super simple. So let's go ahead and jump in and see how this works. Cool, so I've gone ahead and reset this back to where we started. We can take a really quick look at the other code that I have in here. Um, up at the top, just basic kind of HTML boilerplate stuff. In our actual HTML, I'll close up the style tag. We just have an H1 uh, for the text that we're actually gonna be doing this effect on. And then a paragraph tag and a button. For the stylings, we just have kind of a basic reset on the, oops, on the body, we're just kind of putting stuff in the middle of the page. And then some styles for these paragraph and button here, which do not really matter for this example. So go ahead and close that up. All that we really care about is the use case of kind of this heading here. So we have this font size set on our kind of hero text here, this big H1 here. And then we're using some media queries to make this text bigger or smaller dependent on the size of the screen. I'm sure that you have written code like this a million times, so have I. This is gonna do exactly what you would think that this would do. And there's actually no problem with this at all. Um, in fact, on my, in my opinion, like for most things, like specifically, um, you know, maybe body copy font sizes or margin or padding for like around the sides of the page, those things you probably wanna have super strict control over, at least in my opinion. Maybe you have a use case where that's not the case, but for me, I like for those things to be pretty strict. But specifically for something like this, so maybe like a really big header text that's going to be up at the top of your screen that's like 100 pixels big, for something like that, it is really nice to be able to get around having to write all of the separate media queries for the specific size of this text and just have kind of one fluid value that's gonna look good and look of a similar size between, you know, a big screen like this and a small screen like this. And fortunately, the way that we can do this is actually really, really straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of these media queries that we have right here. And the first thing that you might think, uh, cool, so we should just have 100 pixels here now, right? Yep, sweet, making sure this was still running. Um, Awesome, so yeah, the first thing that you might think when you think about having like responsive text is just using responsive units. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that. We'll say something like eight viewport width, and we'll go ahead and save that. And uh, we should see that this gets us 95% of the way there. So as we're on small screens, looks like we have a small heading, looks great. And when we get up to big screens like this, big text looks good. There are two issues with this though. The first one is there is no kind of bounds to how much this can grow or shrink because it's just set based on the size of the viewport. So if you have a big, huge, massive, ultra wide monitor, this text is gonna get ridiculously big. Um, maybe that's what you want, but I have a feeling it's probably not what you want. The other issue is because of how this is set, as you zoom in and out, so for somebody like me, like I don't have unbelievably great eyesight, so if a small text on the page, sometimes I'll bump it up a little bit, you'll see that the size of this text remains exactly the same, which is not particularly awesome user experience. Maybe in some cases you can get away with this and it's fine, but to me, I, I really don't like that. I think that if somebody's gonna want to zoom in, you're gonna want everything to zoom in. So those are kind of the two issues that we face with this just setting uh, your font size or something like that using a viewport unit or something like that. Fortunately, there is a super easy way around this and that is using the CSS clamp function. Oops, go ahead like that. Um, and clamp just takes three values, it's super easy. So the first value is gonna be kind of your, your minimum bound. The middle value is going to be kind of the current value, uh, which we'll explain in a second. And then the higher, or the third one is going to be kind of your upper, or maybe, yeah, something like that, like your upper bound. Um, and we'll go ahead and start off by, oh, actually we can do this really quick. So the browser support for this is relatively good. The only thing is Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer is Internet Explorer. So, so long as you don't care about that, you should be pretty safe using this. I've seen this in production plenty of times. Um, but yeah, okay, so, so back to how this actually works. We're gonna go ahead and set this to start by just saying, okay, I think our lower bound was something like 50 pixels and the upper bound we wanted was something like 100 pixels. Save that, actually that's gonna explode. And then our middle value here, we can just hard code an actual pixel value here to start. It needs to be something that's variable. So obviously 75 pixels is not lower than 50 pixels and it's not above 100 pixels. So this is just going to stay at 75 pixels no matter how big or small the screen is, which is perfectly great. That's what we would expect. Um, but what you actually want here is some kind of variable value. So something like viewport units. So we'll go ahead and change this back to our eight viewport width, something like that. 
So now you can think like, okay, on a big screen, eight viewport width might be, you know, 150 pixels, which is bigger than 100 pixels, in which case clamp is just going to clamp that back down. And then on a small screen, maybe eight viewport width is 35 pixels or something like that, which is obviously smaller than 50 pixels, in which case you'll just kind of squish it back up to 50 pixels. If we go ahead and save that, we should see that this works pretty much exactly as we expect. So if we get to smaller screens like this, once we go to about there, now we're just staying because eight viewport width is smaller than 50 pixels at 50 pixels and vice versa in the other direction. So as we get bigger, we're eventually gonna to get to this point right here. And this is now just going to stick at 100 pixels because eight viewport width, once you hit here is above 100 pixels. That was super long winded, but I just wanna make sure I'm very clear on how that actually works. The one issue we'll still kind of have though, so we'll see like maybe we'll go to a really big screen and then I'll start zooming out. See, it looks like the text issue is not happening anymore. Like we're still getting some kind of zoom on our big text there and vice versa on smaller screens. But what we'll see is in these kind of in-between values, so if I go somewhere like this, we will still get kind of this issue where the text is remaining at the same size until you actually start hitting one of those bounds in either direction. So the way that we can fix this or at least mitigate this is introduced to this middle value, some kind of non-responsive unit. So maybe we'll do something like say, seven viewport width plus one rem, something along those lines. And you'll still get a little bit of this issue, but you will get be able to mitigate this a little bit more. You can play around with these values to get something, kind of dial in on something that actually works well if this is something you're really worried about. But introducing some non-responsive units like rem or pixels or whatever it might be to your viewport units will get rid of a, a pretty good chunk of uh, your zoom issues. Um, and yeah, so that, that's really the, the basics of how this works. The one other thing I would mention is basing, like th this middle kind of value is really gonna be your lever for deciding when this effect starts to happen and if it even happens at all. So, you know, you can think about if I set this to something like 50 viewport width, at no point is 50 viewport width going to be less than 100 pixels. So you might set something like this and be like, hey man, why is it not working? Like no matter what size it is, my text is remaining the same size. That's super annoying. And if you think about it, it's exactly what you expect to happen because even at a size like this, like this is say 400 pixels across, then your font size is at 200 pixels still, which is obviously more than 100 pixels. So it's doing exactly what you might think. Same thing in the other direction. You know, if you set this to one viewport width, like one viewport width is never going to be more than 50 pixels, right? Or not until you get to like a huge screen or something like that. So just play around with this value. I mean, you can think about it and you can do a little bit of math if you want based on the viewport size to get dialed in on exactly what you want. But for me, it's easier to just kind of move this up and down until I get to the right zone of where I feel like it's growing at the right time and at the right speed. Cool, so that's gonna be it for this one, guys. I hope this was useful for you. If it was, I would really appreciate the like and subscribe. I am trying to get a lot better at doing these videos at least once per week. So if you would like to help motivate me to do that, the subscribe really would mean a lot. If you've come over from my TikTok, I really appreciate it as well. If you're just finding me over here and you would like more content like this, I actually do a lot more content over on TikTok. There will be a link in the description. I have you know, 60, 70 tutorials or something like that over there, which are actually pretty similar to this one, just a more quickly cut, obviously. So if you're looking for more, there's definitely more to be found. I really appreciate it again, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.